A couple of days ago, I managed to fascinate a lot of you by pointing out that some people cannot imagine color. I myself am one of those people. I can't do it. I cannot imagine colorful images. Even when I dream, I dream in black and white. But there are also people who can't imagine anything at all. They just do not have the capability of wielding objects into being. And it's fascinating because for years we assume that what goes into our brain is something that every other human being is capable of doing. But not only is that not the case, as it turns out, it also strongly affects the personality of the individual based on his capability of imagining things. So for example, a person that doesn't have the capability of producing mental images is less likely to enjoy reading books because as he is reading, he can't visualize the thing. And he might even have problems studying in certain fields. Imagine studying anatomy in medicine if you can't actually visualize where the muscles and the bones are. So it's not that they can't do it, it's just that they're going to have a much more difficult time doing it than someone that has a more robust imagination. And if you wanna point out something really sad, for an individual that can't visualize images at all, think about what happens if his mother passes away and there's no picture of her. With that said, there is something else that I didn't cover in the previous episode and I found out about it later on. I assumed that even the people who can't imagine things in their brain must at least have the inner monologue. You know, that little voice in your head that tells you that you should buy bread or the one that activates when you're reading a book. Well, guess what? Turns out some people don't have it. And no matter how much they try, they just can't do it. Now, luckily, it doesn't mean that there's an overlap between seeing images and hearing your inner monologue. So many people, for example, they may not be able to articulate words inside their head, but they can still see images. They can still imagine emotions. So that is something that I found very interesting because, again, can you imagine just how much it would shape someone's personality if they don't have the inner monologue? I mean, you're not going to have that voice in your head doubting when you want to ask a girl out yeah <laughs> maybe that's a good thing i don't know but apparently a lot of people who don't have inner monologue they don't like reading imagine that so when they actually read the book they have to move their lips they they cannot just silently read the book they, they have to actively hear themselves expressing it and for others from what i understand they actually visualize the words so they don't really hear the inner monologue, but they can see like the words and the, the phrases. And not surprisingly, as I mentioned before, they don't like reading, but they read very fast. So there's a downside, but there's usually also an upside. Like for example, the people that don't have an inner monologue, they actually are more active than the ones with an inner monologue because they, they don't like just sitting there and not doing anything they would be more bored than you are. Like imagine just not having the ability to imagine. So you're just sitting at a desk and you're staring at the walls. They need to do something. They need to fill their time with something. So again, it changes their personality because they become a lot more active. They can't just be alone with their thoughts. And what's also interesting is that there is another condition where people do not associate the inner monologue with themselves. So they think that this inner monologue is actually a different entity. And this is where you go into the realm of mental illnesses. So you can have a schizophrenic, the type of people that hear voices from God. In reality, what's happening is that it's actually their inner monologue, but they don't recognize it as their own. So they're actually hearing these voices that tell them to do things. But in reality, it's their own consciousness that tells them to do things. So this is the difference between pathological and healthy person. The most interesting thing about it is that all of the research surrounding this is fairly recent because up until this point, even scientists didn't know that other people are wired differently. And it also fascinates people on the internet who have created a favorite pastime of pestering people with questions that don't have an inner monologue. So let's see uh, some of these questions. You have this guy wondering, okay, so when your boss tells you to do something, when you're ready to leave work, do you not think in your head, holy shit, what an asshole? And the person without the inner monologue says, no, I never had that. 
If I'm asked to do something I don't want to do, I just get frustrated, but that's kind of about it. I don't really think it to myself. Someone else says, I'm in the same way. I don't have any conscious thought about what I'm feeling or any stream of dialogue describing it to myself. I just feel it. It's like the inner dialogue is the middleman in my head who just isn't there. And, you know, you kind of rationalize it like this, but you kind of also know just how difficult it may be in certain situations. Like, for example, you're ready to go in an interview and you can't really think about what you're going to say. You can't really picture how the conversation went. I mean, this is why like some pe people actually need to go in front of a mirror to practice these things. But yikes. Um, I'm really curious, like how, how do these people remember a number if they have to? It's like someone tells you, hey, uh, 1,565. Just, just remember that for a couple of seconds because I'll need it in a bit. Like how, how do they do it? For others, it's more complicated. I don't have an inner monologue either. Anytime I have to communicate outside my head with words, I have to translate what I'm thinking. That takes time and effort. It's why I vastly prefer written communication over verbal, since you can take more time than the instant response verbal communication requires. So I can imagine these people are probably a lot more introverted because of that. When you go to a party and you see the guy sitting in the corner of the room, preferring not to engage, or you know the individuals that talk very little at a party, and, and they can be smart people. I'm not saying anything like that. It's just like their personality is not very outgoing. When I know I will need to verbally communicate, such as if I need to make a phone call or bring up a topic in a meeting, I prepare mentally as much as possible so I know the words I actually need to say. On the other hand, if I'm in a conversation where I haven't had time to organize and translate my thoughts ahead of time, I constantly have long pauses where if I'm doing it in real time, which comes off weird to people who notice it. This annoyed my wife for a long time until we both realized what was happening. Take into account that most of these individuals don't know that they're different. Like they think everyone is the same way. It probably baffles them. It's like, how can this guy just go into a verbal diarrhea and explain everything and while I have so much trouble like translating what I'm thinking? So there you go. That's an interesting fact, which uh, I presented because you guys love the previous video so much. And it's also something that I'm fascinated about. I mean, this can explain just so much why some people are more introverted, why some people are more creative, why some people have an easier time memorizing things. Obviously, it doesn't explain all of it, but it is a nice place to start. And you do understand that if a person is wired in this different way, then their personality and their lived experiences are also going to be different. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And as usual, if you like my channel, please share the video. And if you want to obtain some buyer's remorse, you can support the channel. There's a pinned comment in the comment section. You click on that and it's going to take you to a website where you will get buyer's remorse guarantee. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.